Hey everyone, today we're going to have a look at a JFET based infinite impedance detector, which in this setup is being used as an AM demodulator. You can see the signal generator generating a AM modulated signal with a carrier frequency of 455 kilohertz, which is being modulated with a one kilohertz tone at a modulation depth of about 80%. If you take a look at the scope screen, you can see the yellow trace, which is the AM modulated signal at 455 kilohertz with the one kilohertz envelope. And the purple trace is showing the perfectly demodulated signal. So this here is an infinite impedance detector in its most basic form. It's extremely simple. The circuit was commonly used in the old days of vacuum tubes or valves for you Americans out there to demodulate AM signals. It's said to have superior fidelity and lower harmonic distortion, especially at high modulation depths in comparison to a diode based detector or similar circuits. So the way the circuit works is really extremely simple. Through R103, the active device, in this case a BF256B, is essentially biased into cutoff mode. So if you were to measure the voltage here, it would be essentially the pinch off voltage of the active device. And as a matter of fact, it is about two and a half volts. And therefore, through this resistor R102, the gate voltage is lower than the source voltage and the JFET device is not conducting or not conducting significantly. Of course, it, in reality, it has to conduct some, else we wouldn't see a voltage here. If an AM signal comes in through here, through the coupling capacitor, the negative half wave of the amplitude modulated signal is not going to cause any significant change in the conductivity of the JFET. The positive half wave, on the other hand, will cause a change in the conductivity and essentially the voltage at the source will follow the positive half wave of the amplitude modulated signal. Now, of course, we need to filter the signal because if we would only follow the positive half wave, we would also get our RF car carrier, or at least the upper half of the RF carrier to feed through here. And that's the job of C104 in parallel with R103. Those two low pass filter out the remaining RF carrier. So what comes out here through another coupling cap is just the envelope of the amplitude modulated signal. I selected R103 to be 33 kilo ohms, which seems to be about right for the BF256B and C104 to be 10 nanofarads. The component values um, I determined simply by experimentation. However, there appears to be some guidance in the literature. For instance, the RC time constant, so basically this value times this value should be at least three times higher than the period of the lowest carrier frequency. If you select C104 too large, it will also attenuate audio components that you might want to pass through. If you select it too small, you're going to get some of your RF carrier leaking through, which could of course be filtered out later on, but it would be nice to just get a clean signal right from the start. So here's the ugly construction circuit, which really deserves the title ugly construction because it is really ugly. Up here, you have some decoupling capacitors to make sure that the voltage from the nine volt battery is clean and that there's no RF feed through. Now, of course, the voltage from a nine volt battery is always pretty clean, but I just wanted to make sure that if I hook the circuit up to something else, I would also have some RF decoupling up here. Here's the active device, the BF256B. Down here we have the source resistor, which I think in this circuit is actually a 22 kilo ohm one. This was one of my first tries and it works reasonably well. Here's the 10 nanofarad capacitor and parallel to this resistor, this one right here. And hidden underneath here is the 100 kilo ohms gate resistor. And that's pretty much the entire circuit. Through this red and black connector, I'm putting in an amplitude modulated signal from the signal generator. And 
this probe here taps off the source of the active device and goes straight to channel 2 of my oscilloscope. So here's my test setup as explained before. The signal generator generates a amplitude modulated signal at a carrier frequency of 455 kilohertz. You can see here it's modulating it with a 1 kilohertz tone at an 80% modulation depth. The signal goes into channel 1 of the oscilloscope but also into this side of the infinite impedance detector and the output goes into channel 2 of the oscilloscope that's the bottom trace here and you see the signal looks pretty clean um, as far as the amplitude is concerned if you take a look at the peak-to-peak -peak value of the trace 1 it says about 3.6 volts if we halve that because we're only following one half wave then we're getting about 1.8 volt and 80% of that is about 1.4 something so we're basically getting unity gain so to speak I don't like using the word gain when it's actually not putting in any gain but so be it um, if I vary the frequency you can see it follows just fine there's some roll off starting at about this point here we are at about 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, and back to 1 kilohertz. The interesting thing is that at the moment we're not ha implementing any circuitry that is sensitive to the input frequency. So if I were to change the frequency of the carrier, not much happens at all. As a matter of fact, this even works at a 10.7 megahertz IF you see the amplitude dropped a little bit but not really significantly so in this variant of the infinite impedance detector I am actually using an intermediate frequency transformer it's a 42 IF 103 which is for 455 kilohertz I removed the gate resistor it's no longer needed because there is a DC path through the coil to ground and I, of course, also removed the coupling capacitor because it's no longer needed either. In my actual ugly construction style circuit, I included a potentiometer because I wanted to experiment with different values of R2 3. But it turns out that 33 kilo ohms appears to be the uh, sweet spot, at least for the BF256B or for my batch. I mean, JFETs tend to stray quite a bit, but. Yeah, that was just for experimentation purposes. Now the advantage of this is that there's a transformation from a low impedance to a high impedance. Therefore, the voltage presented here will also increase over a high impedance load. So we should see a gain through this stage. So we should get a significantly higher level of audio out here than what the AM modulated signal actually offers. Uh, if that's actually the case, we'll check out on the oscilloscope. So here's the test setup with the second circuit. It is, besides the circuit itself, the same as before. So the signal generator still generates an amplitude modulated signal at a carrier frequency of 455 kilohertz, still at 80% modulation depth, and at the moment modulating with a 1 kilohertz tone. I've changed the output amplitude from 2 volts peak to peak to 400 millivolts peak to peak. And if you have a look at the oscilloscope screen, the trace 2, which is the demodulated signal, has a peak to peak amplitude of about 1.6 something volts. So there actually is a gain through the infinite impedance detector. So that concludes the short video on the JFET based infinite impedance detector used as an AM demodulator. I also wrote an article which includes all the schematics that I just showed you on my blog. The link will be down in the video description. See you next time.